what was your it can't be that easy, it was that easy moment in your life. Found a 60 TV by the dumpster. Plugged it in, didn't turn on. Looked up common problems with the model number, bought a part on eBay for $20, replaced part, had a huge TV. Edit, wow, that is many upvotes. I didn't even know Reddit gave trophies for best comment day and am kinda confused why I got it for fixing a TV. Anyways, so fun to hear about everyone's similar experiences. Let's all keep fixing shit that turns out to be $20 or less with minimal effort from not being shit. In college the professor advertised an internship and wrote the info on the board. Out of a class of 150 students, I was the only one to apply and I fulfilled my internship requirement for graduation. Honestly, after being incredibly broke, I remember how easy everything suddenly seemed when I had money. Car broken? Get it fixed. Sick? Go to the doctor. Need a babysitter? Hire one. Money makes everything so much easier and less disruptive to life. I knew I'd made it when I put my bills on auto pay. Money doesn't buy happiness but it buys stability, and stability leads to happiness. Life is so much more enjoyable when your number one focus isn't survival. One of the kids I babysit was going through a phase of I want to be a baby again. Jealous of her sister. Weeks of gentle parenting and such. You know what worked? I was eating ice cream and she wanted some. I said babies don't get ice cream. That was it. She was done. One time I tightened my gas cap and the check engine light went off. Changing my bathroom faucet. I'm a 56-year-old woman that's never done any plumbing before. Turns out YouTube is a wealth of knowledge. It really wasn't that hard. I get joy every time I wash my hands knowing I did that. Edit, thanks for all the awards, kind strangers. My nearly complete Luddite friend often says that the how to videos on YouTube almost makes up for the rest of the internet lol. Got a salary request when applying for a job, accidentally wrote double what I meant to write since the number keys were right next to each other. They accepted anyway. Edit, well that exploded. Not me, but someone I know, got a new job, asked for 60, thinking $60,000 per year, employer agreed thinking $60 hour. This is how they found out they were severely underpaid at previous job. If the employer didn't balk at $60h they could still be underpaid. Worked on an almost $5 million lighting rig for a concert as a junior guy on the job. We get it all plugged in and patched but none of it would turn on. All the guys were freaking out trying to figure out why. The team collectively had about 150 years of experience. No one checked row C if the generators were turned on. I was like no way this is why but I'll just go check if the generators are good. Flip stuff on and viola. Flip stuff on and viola. It was a classical concert then? He was like, cello? Has no one thought to turn on the generator? Making my username. Complete opposite experience for me. In a bar on a work night just for a couple of drinks with a mate. Briefly talked to a girl at the bar when I was ordering a drink. I left an hour later and said goodbye to her as I was walking out. She asked if she could come with me I was like oh I'm just going home and she said yes I know. Completely hit me out of the blue, I was like oh right. Ah. Yeah sure, you can absolutely come with me. I was sus and confused about it. But all went well. Turns out she had been stood up for a date and sat there for an hour or so by herself. And I was just in the right place and the right time. Edit due to the questions in the comments, we had a good time and good banner that night and the next morning. But no we never saw each other again. She was mortified by the age difference. She was 28 years old and I was 21 year old first year graduate at a finance firm. I knew you were young, but what kind of fucking 21 year old wears a suit to a bar on a Thursday night was about the line. I think she clicked that things were off when she saw the supermarket shopping trolley in the living room, flatmates doing who was still at uni. It was all in good faith though good times were had. She spent 60 bucks on a wax and wasn't going to waste it. I wouldn't either. 60 bucks hell if no one was taking me home I'd be flashing the place on my way out and show em what they all missed. I had a loose hinge on my door. It kind of drove me crazy for 3 years, but I had no idea how to fix the wood that had been stripped. Then I found a product on Amazon for $10 where you shove on a sleeve, break it off and then screw in the new screws. Bought two new hinges that don't squeak. Took about 10 minutes and cost $20 and it's no longer a problem. Edit, product is called screw it again. About $10 for 10 of them on Amazon. 
Edit, thank you for all the tips about using matches, golf tees, shims, etc. Toothpicks and wood glue can work really well for filling a strip screw hole. Got a job that required full-time field work for minimal pay, in Oz. On my first day they asked about other skills. I saw other people using AutoCAD so I said I used it in college but I was really rusty. This was a lie. I had only ever used it once to draw some circles. They were excited and got me a four-day refresher class. I learned AutoCAD and haven't been in the field in over a year. I later asked for more pay since I wasn't a field tech anymore. They said no. I got another job using AutoCAD for double salary. Pro tip, learn AutoCAD C3D. It's not that hard, and boomers will think you're a tech god. Learn how to use Google. Everyone will think you're a god. Excel. They still can't figure shit out. The ability to learn quickly allows you to put just about anything as a skill on your resume, as long as you can bash it out before the interview. Being able to convey and follow instructions needs plenty of emphasis. I was recently looking for an apartment and rent in my city, like most cities currently, is outrageous so after three days of looking I found this two-bedroom apartment with a price that normally would get you a roach-infested one-bedroom studio shithole in a bad part of town but these apartments look nice, they're in a good part of town, the reviews online are all positive, I can't figure out the catch then I see there is a year-long wait list for this place, but I decide to go to the leasing office and after talking to the property manager, I get bumped to the top of the list for an apartment that becomes available next month I keep waiting for the bottom to drop out. Most people spend months looking for places in my city and they'd be paying a third more than I'm paying at a minimum for a similar place. I looked for three days and found this place but I think I just got lucky and it was just that easy. I had a similar experience. Back in April of 2021, my landlord broke the news that he was selling the house that we'd lived in for nearly a decade once the lease was up in June. Obviously, with the housing crisis, panic set in. My so was browsing marketplace and saw a rental posted for less than an hour. It was for a two-bedroom house in the perfect neighborhood for only $650 a month. It almost seemed too good to be true. He was able to set up an interview with the landlords. Once we saw the house, it was perfect, it's a cozy little craftsman built in 1914. It's within walking distance of my work. My first words once we walked in were, this is home. The landlords loved us, and we have an excellent rental history. They ended up cancelling their other interviews, and we moved in two days later. I don't know how we lucked out so much, but I do know that I love my house. Having someone who's paid their rent for the past 10 years without issue is a golden renter. When my parents were doing rentals, one person trashed the house and the other two were late on payments and or broke the lease due to emergencies. I started looking for a job last year and got three offers within two months, two of which were significantly higher pay. Made me realize I've been sitting around way too long. Actually doing the chore you put off for a few days. But I don't want to do my laundry. Doing laundry is the easy part. The folding and putting away part is thing I can't seem to do regularly. Fixing clogged drains. Started out because my sink drain plug wouldn't stay up. Poked around under the sink and found the pop-up rod had rusted completely through and broken. Cost me $5 for a new one at the plumbing supply store next to where I worked at the time. Took 5 minutes to figure out how to swap, and now I know how sink and shower drains come apart, which makes unclogging them simple. Maybe it's just me, but in my brain it seemed like that was something I'd have to call a plumber to come unclog, but it's all remarkably simple. First time I went over to my now wife's house, she mentioned that she accidentally clogged the bathroom sink with a bottle cap. Challenge ducking accepted. Disassembled the drain, got the cap, and had it back together in 10 minutes. Pretty sure that sealed the deal right there. Went to my now wife's house, she mentioned she needed to buy a new vacuum cleaner since the professional model she purchased a couple months earlier stopped working. Challenge accepted. I emptied the bag and it powered right up. We used that bad boy for another 10 years. As Red Green would say in men, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy.